Welcome to the coming apocalypse. Evangelist and pastor Paul Bagley will take you on a journey into the end times prophecy. He'll examine current world events and explain how they relate to the end times. For decades, Pastor Bagley has provided people all over the world with an understanding of today's world events from a biblical perspective. Now, here's your host, Pastor Paul Bagley. Welcome. This is the coming apocalypse. We have an awesome live audience with us today, and I guarantee you're going to enjoy this broadcast. We're going to be preaching today on the seven thunders of God. And I guarantee if, you're, if you've been studying Revelation, if you've been concerned about the end times, if you want to know what it means, the coming apocalypse, well, you need to know that the coming apocalypse, the Greek word apocalypse, which means revelation, the coming revelation of Jesus Christ. The Bible is filled with prophecy. Matter of fact, 75% of the Bible is prophecy. And it's why, because in the end times, the great confrontation begins to build, but the church is ready. We are going to meet the challenge because greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. So hang on, get ready for the word of the Lord, the seven thunders of God. Amen? Yeah. All right. A brand new book I've just finished called Reflections from the Land of the Prophets. This book is filled with beautiful pictures, a pictorial, if you will, of the Holy Land, and some definite great insight to the prophets that once spoke mightily in the times leading us up to the present. It's a prophetic word, a reflection of what God has spoken, not only historically from the past, but for the future. Go to my website. It's available now. I want to invite you to come with me on the sea tours to Israel. It's going to be powerful. This coming up this November the 9th through the 18th. It's going to be a powerful time in the Holy Lands. I mean, you're going to be, you can be baptized in the Jordan River. You can renew your wedding vows at the marriage of Cana, where Jesus turned the water into wine. You can take communion with me at the garden tomb. I mean, this will be a powerful time. Now call the number on the screen and say, I'm going with Paul Begley to Israel. Are you serious? Praise God. What a great crowd of folks we have today from all across the country, really, from the East Coast to the West Coast, from the North, from the South. And we're gathered here today, of course, at uh, Channel 40 here in Indianapolis, Indiana, the studios of LaCie Broadcasting. And we're just great that you're watching. We want you to know right now we're living in the last days and we're encouraged about what God is doing. Matter of fact, if you'll turn your Bibles, we're going to go to the Revelation 10 and talk about the seven thunders of God, all right? It's in the Word of the Lord. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 10, And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head, and his face was as it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. He had in his hand a little book opened, and he set his right foot upon the sea, his left foot on the earth, and he cried with a loud voice as when a lion roareth, and when he had cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. And when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, I was about to write, and I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, seal up those things which the seven thunders have uttered. Now, when you read this in the word of the Lord, you begin to wonder, what in the world? I mean, I mean, I've read this so many times. What in the world are the seven thunders of God? And what is it they could have said? Well, one thing is, doing some research, we found out that the word thunder throughout the Bible can mean judgment. And actually, you can find in 1 Samuel 2, 10, uh, it talks about the thunder and the judgment of God that would be brought upon the children of Israel when they were disobedient and they were walking outside the laws of God. So God, in the end times, there's going to be a wrath of God poured out upon the earth. That's not a question. Good news is he hasn't appointed us unto wrath. Can you say amen? amen? Because what he's done for us 
is he has guaranteed us that, praise the Lord, he has delivered us, he has set us free. We are not going to face the judgment of God because we've received the salvation of God, all right? So we're going to be absolutely living in a situation where even though we're up against many obstacles and many, many forces of darkness that may try to stop us or trip us up, I'm glad that the word of the Lord says, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Yeah. We have the power in the name of Jesus. And you might find yourself sometimes going through some valleys or going through some mountains or going through some situations where you don't know how you're going to overcome it. You need to understand it, but the Bible says that death and life is in the power of the tongue. So you can speak life, speak joy, speak victory, walk on the devil. Don't let him walk on you. Uh, I actually got a pair of boots when I went to Texas, and uh, 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 I thought of that song, uh, you know, these boots were made for walking, and that's what I'm going to do. If the devil comes near me, I'm going to walk all over you. Well, we have that power. Amen? So, look, there's this angel. I mean, the thing about Revelation, you have all these different symbols that play out in front of us, so many different symbols that, that God would use when he gave this word to uh, John the Revelator. And he says, I saw a mighty angel come down from heaven. He was clothed with cloud and a rainbow was on his head and his face was it were the sun, his feet as the pillars of fire. I don't know. Some people have actually seen, physically seen angels and they always tell me, I've never seen an angel in the spiritual world in a vision or dream. I've just never have. But I've talked to folks who have. They always tell me they're gigantic. They're tall. They're, they're huge. They're, they're bright. Um, Heidi says to me, you know, she says, I pray for our, uh, our apartment, she says, and the Lord showed her the two angels that he has set outside our door, she said, and they have their flaming swords, and they're, they're just like, if anybody wants to mess with us, good luck, <laughs> all right? Because there's, uh, God said that he would send us ministering spirits. So sometimes you might think you're alone. I need you to know right now, you're never alone. Jesus said, I'll never leave you, I'll never forsake you, but I'll go with you all the way, even to the end of the world. And so if he says this, he means this. You can count on the Lord. You might be uh, at work. You might be driving down the highway. You may feel depression trying to settle in on you. That's when you got to cast off that, that spirit of heaviness and put on the garment of praise. You need to know that the Lord inhabits the praise of his people. We have this power in the name of Jesus. And with this power, we are going to make a difference in the kingdom of the Lord. We're going to lead lost souls to Christ. The Lord is counting on us. And we, even though we're going to face many things, know this. You are the conqueror. You're more than a conqueror through Christ yeah. Jesus that strengthens you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well... Here's what he says. He said in verse 3, he said, and he, there was this little book that the, Lord, that the angel gave him and said, and he put one foot on land and one on sea and cried with a loud voice as when a lion roareth. And when he had cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. God was bringing special revelation. The Bible talks about there's seven spirits of God. We know that even the Ark of the Covenant was carried. There went before it seven priests who would blow seven ram horns. When they came to Jericho, the accursed city, they realized that this was a city with great walls, great obstacles. Also know this, there were giants in that day, in that very area where they were at. The children of Israel were coming up against things that were bigger than they, than they were, if you looked at it in the natural, but they were able to overcome. God, for some reason, always speaks in biblical numbers, Seven is one of the key numbers, the seven seals, the seven angels, the seven last plagues, the seven vials. Even when Jesus fed a multitude, they picked up seven baskets of leftovers. Everything God does, he uses that seven as a complete number. It's a powerful number, just like 12 is, just like three is. These are the numbers of God. So when the angels uttered seven, the thunders uttered their voices, seven of them. When the seven thunders had uttered their voices, says, I was about to write, John said, and I heard a voice from heaven say unto me, seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered and write them not. 
Now, I always, when I read that, I always said, okay, <laughs> why couldn't you let us have it? Why could, well, there's part of it is this. Daniel had the same problem. God showed Daniel many things about the end times, and then he even told him to write it down in the book, but he said, but then seal it until the last days. So what happened is God was given revelation knowledge to Daniel, and that same revelation knowledge would be given to John on the Isle of Patmos. But John's ready to re reveal it, and he's getting revelation knowledge everywhere you turn, and yet God is telling him not to speak it. And I've been praying about that. Why in the world was, could John not speak it? But because here's the difference. Whenever you have something prophetic, sometimes until it's that time, you can't reveal it. Here's why in the last, in, during these times we've been in, let's go back to Jack Van Empey 40 years ago. He would talk about there's going to be prophecies. He would tell us about things that were going to happen down the road. But until the time come, we didn't understand how those things would work. For instance, in the Bible, it talks about men would run to and fro and knowledge would increase. I read that as a child. And I'm thinking, well, how does that, what does that got to do with it? Now I understand with the internet, men can run to and fro and knowledge is increasing instantly. Your iPhones, your, your iPads, instantaneous information. Also, in other words, the information, the uh, technology is catching up with the prophecies. And now when things happen, you say, oh, now I see why that's happening. Because the Bible had told us this, but it wasn't time to be revealed. Here John is hearing seven thunders of God, and yet God is telling him not to speak it, not to even reveal it, but he's revealing it to him. Uh, there comes a time, though, when these seven thunders or seven judgments are going to be revealed to humanity. I actually was praying the other day a few months ago, and the Lord started speaking to me about three judgments of God. When the children of Israel began to turn away from the Lord, the first thing God would do was reveal, he would first send harbinger warnings. All right, so we know that Jonathan Kahn comes along and he writes the book, The Harbinger. He shows America about 9-11. He breaks it down. I mean, we even went to uh, Manhattan. We went uh, to Ground Zero, Heidi and I did, there at St. Paul's Cathedral. There were seven buildings that fell on 9-11, but one building did not fall, and that building was St. Paul's Cathedral. It had been there forever, okay? It's been there since the 1600s. It's actually... George Washington even went in there and prayed there after he was inaugurated as the president of the United States. That building did not fall. The other seven big skyscrapers did. There was a beam that come flying off one of the twin towers, hits a sycamore tree, and kills the tree. The Bible told us in the book of Isaiah that the, the sycamores would be cut down and they would regrow cedars. What happened? The tree died. They replaced it with a cedar tree. The, bu the buildings would crumble down with the bricks. Everything in there was warnings and harbingers. But you can't understand them sometimes until you get to that time in history. Then it becomes so clear to you. I believe that the seven thunders judgment of God will be revealed to his people. And when they do, you'll say, oh, my Lord, that is one of the thunders. Here we go again. There's another judgment. You'll see them begin to come about. God says to me, all right, the first one is harbingers, the prophecies, dreams, visions. People are receiving everywhere, all right? You can get them, you hear them, you watch them, and a lot of them, they're confirming with others. The Lord says, after there's many revelations and many harbingers, then the Lord spoke, speaks about judgment. He sends a wicked king. The children of Israel would come underneath a king that would be wicked, who would not at all follow the laws of God. He would not at all follow what the Lord had commanded in his word. And what happened was this, when these things took place, uh, these were, again was another warning of judgment, another chance to repent. Uh, right now we've got dead birds, dead fish, dead cows everywhere. I mean, every time you turn around, there's dead birds floating, you know, dying. You got whales dying. You got cattle falling over dead. You got everything happening. And God keeps saying, because there's no truth, there's no mercy, there's no knowledge of God in the land. And because of the swearing, the lying, the killing, the stealing, committing adultery, you know, because man won't repent. Man just w will not. But if, if we individually repent, God can cleanse us, change us, turn our life around. Can you say amen? Amen. 
I truly believe that America needs the same repentance. I believe that we are watching the harbinger warnings of this nation. I believe that the body of Christ, let me just say this, in the election, you notice before the election, Christians, they always tell us the separation of church and state. All right, just stay away. You Christians, just stay away. Don't get, you know, we don't want to hear your opinion. We don't want to know what you're saying. Just stay away. But as soon as the election time come around, evangelicals, well, how do they think? How do they feel? I mean, you become the most important uh, segment of the population. We got to get the evangelical vote. We got to get the evangelicals. So in other words, we play a part in the actual position of this nation. We have a voice, and we have more than just a voice. We have the power of God. We have the power of prayer. We can pray and turn the tide against the devil. I still believe that. We have harbinger warnings. We have a, a prophetic word that comes forward. We may have uh, witnessed at times wicked leadership, but God also says in a third form of judgment is if a nation doesn't repent. The Bible says a nation that forgets God is turned into hell. The Lord also will allow you to go into captivity. And the children of Israel, if they did not heed the warnings of the prophets, then they would fall under wicked kings. If they still worship their pagan gods and still walked away from the laws of God, then they would then they would have a situation developed where they would become under captivity of Babylon or some other empire that would come and try to consume them and take them down and control them and contain them. And so what we need to understand is the seven thunders of God or the seven judgments of God are being played out in these last days. God is revealing. He is warning. He is positioning. But the body of Christ needs to understand that we, we're in the world, but we're not of the world, okay? I mean, we're in the world, but we're not of it. You're in, a different, you're in a different blessing. I mean, you're under a different covering if you're born again. The minute you get saved, you become a, a new creature in Christ Jesus. The old things pass away, and behold, all things become new. And so uh, let's read on what it says here in the word of the Lord. He says, so the seven thunders were uttered, and he said, write them, write them not. And the angel which I saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth lifted up his hand to heaven and swear by him that liveth forever and ever, who created heaven and the things that therein and the earth, the things that therein are, and the sea, the things which are therein, that there should be time no longer. And I want to stop on that point for just a moment because some of the scientists are starting to tell us now that, the, uh, that in perfect light, if you're ever in a, in a moment of perfect light where there's absolutely no darkness, no shadow, nothing, just pure light, at that moment, time stands still. Think about this. Time has never, ever, ever stood still. But there's a time coming when it will be no longer. In other words, a moment of absolute light. Who is light? Jesus. Amen. He is the light of the world. And see, when he comes, literally, as the preparation, there's a revealing coming. There's a time when there will be no more time because it has to stop. Everything is going to stop. Even Bible talks about that, that the, uh, there's going to be silence in heaven for the space of a half hour. There's going to be a silence, a preparation of the coming of the Lord, of a preparation of him coming to get the bride. And if we are ready, if we've been saved, if we're washed in the blood, if we're set free, uh, we're ready. I, I don't know about you. I'm ready to go. I, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. Some of you may be watching at home. You might say, well, I've got plenty of time. I'm, you know, I, uh, I'm not really worried about this coming apocalypse. You know, uh, did you ever notice that what goes on? The devil mocks everything that God does. The devil has, a, a, has an absolute a counterfeit for everything God does. And uh, even uh, the zombie apocalypse thing, I've been talking about that enough. But uh, you had these people, you know, they get possessed and they're biting other people and and then Hollywood takes it to another level. They want to show a mockery of the resurrection, what they're doing. The walking dead, the living dead, the whatever dead. John's dead and everybody's dead. Everybody's crawling around like that, you know, they're coming out. And, and I, I keep watching this on TV thinking, what, what are they doing? You know, and the Lord said to me, they're mocking the resurrection. 
Because at the resurrection, when the dead in Christ shall rise, we're not coming out of there like this. We're coming out with our robes made white in the blood of the Lamb. We're coming out of the grave with power. We're coming out of the grave with glory. We're coming out shouting, praise the Lord. You know, I can, I can still see my grandmother when she's, uh, you know, when she used to be alive, she used to shout and stomp the floor and praise God. Amen. And I was thinking about her the other day, thinking as she lies quietly in the grave, the Bible says there's an hour coming when all them that are in the grave are going to come forth, them that are uh, under the resurrection of life. Jesus said, I am the resurrection of life. Listen, when Jesus died, here's the deal. He died on the cross, right? They put his body in Joseph Armathea's new tomb. He's laying there, his body on the slab in the grave. But Christ himself, the Bible says, went and preached to the spirits in prison. In other words, he went into hell itself. He, stored, he literally stared the devil down. He snatched the keys of hell and death. I believe he began to preach to the souls that were there and said, in three days, I'm going to leave this place. In three days, I am the son of the living God and praise the Lord on the third day when he got out of the grave he tore the gates of hell right off its hinges there was some thundering go oh come on somebody help me help me seven thunders of God I believe that when the moment that Christ gave up the ghost on the cross and the redemption for humanity came I believe the Lord's at that moment begin to wash away the sins of the world the Bible says that but when when he got done with that sermon, he tore the gates of hell right off its hinges. He kicked the end out of the tomb, and he rose with the power. Can you say amen? amen. My God, I feel good today. You know, I'd really love for you to go with us to Israel uh, whenever we go in November. I really would with Lassie Tours. I really would because we're going to actually go to Golgotha one day and then to the garden tomb and take communion. Are you serious? I mean... I mean, that's just going to, you, if you can't, if you've never shouted, you will that day. Yes. Because here's why. At this place, on the place of the skull, where the head of Goliath was buried by David himself, who took out the seed of the devil, the same location, Christ gave his life on a hill far away. He died for the sins of the world. It might have bruised his heel, but it crushed the head of the devil, praise God, and <laughs> praise the Lord. Then they put him in that tomb, but glory to God, he's not in the tomb. He's alive and that forevermore. God's thundering his this, The coming of the Lord is not, listen, it's going to shock him. The Bible says every eye is going to behold him. Every knee is going to bow. Every tongue is going to confess that he's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Am I right? It's what the word says. When, he's, when he comes, the, the, the Bible says that the tribes of the earth will mourn. Satan will give up everything that he's fought for. He'll lay down his armor. He'll realize he's defeated. He'll see 10,000. Thousands of God's saints coming to execute judgment on the world. Here comes another thunder. Here comes another thunder. Seven thunders of God, prophecies of judgment. But at the same time, with every judgment, there's a redemption or there's grace. In other words, God sends the judgment, but he always reaches out with the grace. We have the grace of God in our lives. We're saved, set free. And if you're watching today and you're not saved, you can be saved. Can you say amen? I mean, you can be born again. There can be a transformation in your life that it will shock you. You see, here's the deal. They used to sing a song when I was a kid growing up, you know, two coats before me, an old and a new, and I could have either, but what must I do? In other words, you have two chances. You can wear a coat of the world or you can wear the coat of the Lord. And to get on the coat of the Lord, you're going to have to take off the coat of the world. But as soon as you let go and let God take over, your life will change. I'm going to try to finish here real quick here. It says, and so the angel saw, and it says that he stand upon the sea, and upon the earth lifted up his hand to heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever and ever, of course, who created heaven, the things that were therein, the earth, the things that are there, there should be no time or time no longer. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be fulfilled. In other words, there's seven thunders of judgment. I believe we've had six thunders, all right? There's one to go. 
And when he comes, it will be the final thunder of God. Can you say amen? I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Ooh, praise God. You know what? Don't you dare leave. I'll be right back. Uh, I just want to say to you, next week will be a powerful, powerful show. So please, don't miss it. I'll be right back, though, in just a moment. Folks, let me tell you something. I have a book I really recommend you should get. You go to my website at www.paulbegleyprophecy.com. I have a book entitled The Zombie Apocalypse. Now, it has to do with actual, 35 actual accounts of demonic possession and manifestations that uh, is very troubling but will help you understand how demon spirits actually work in these last days. I highly recommend you get it also for your teens and college students to help explain to them the pitfalls to not fall into these uh, sorcery or witchcraft, seances, Ouija boards, or some video games that could alter the mind and the soul of your child. Again, this book, it's only at my website at www.paulbegleyprophecy.com. There you'll find it on the products page. It'll be a blessing to you, insightful, and you'll bless the ministry. Uh, I'm so glad you're watching our broadcast. Would you please tell people about the coming apocalypse? Let them know that we're on, the time we're on as you're watching, and that whichever uh, station you're watching us on, please tell them, say, hey, look, there's a guy who talks about current world events, and, and, the, and he's really getting into the, the Bible prophecy at the end times, but it's something I can relate with. It's something I can, it's because it's now. I'm not talking about something 50 years now. I'm telling you what's happening right now, okay? You're living in the most prophetic time in the history of the world. Again, 75% of the Bible is prophecy, and you're in it whether you want to be or not, Okay. So I'm Pastor Paul Begley. It's been an honor to be here in your home today and with this wonderful live studio audience. We have had a great time here in the Sea Broadcasting on the coming apocalypse.